that brother, if you think this is wrong, forget the Quran. You don't believe in the Quran, keep it aside. I'm saying if you believe the Bible is the word of God, should you follow the Bible or not? Do you agree Bible is the word of God, yes or no? Yes. The Bible says don't have pork. Do you have pork? It's a question of yes or no. Or you say Bible doesn't say. Please let me respond. Then. Sure, you must have Aren't there some things in the life of uh, Muhammad which uh, he says they were at one time uh, halal for you and I have made them haram or they have, were at one time haram and I have made them halal? Doesn't it sometimes happen like that? So we, we believe that for the people of it, Israel, for the Jewish people, when, when Allah gave the law to uh, Musa, alayhi salam, we believe that for them the pork was haram. And this is why it is in the uh, Torah. Brother, in any organization, when any command is given to you, you have to find out who is giving the command. Any command given by high authority can be overruled. Suppose a teacher gives a command in a school and the principal overrules that, she has a right. But a teacher has no right to overrule the command of a principal. So in every religion, the person giving the high authority can overrule, not a low authority. If you read the Quran, Quran mentions that what has been prohibited for the Jews in the Quran, the fat of the ox, it was been haram for them, but for you, who says that? Highest authority, Almighty God. Now in the Bible, I know what you're referring to. Saint Peter, he sees a dream. You see that, correct? Saint Peter. That's right. He sees a dream and he sees that the pork is good and eating of pork is there. It's a dream. One thing, whether it be any apostle, whether it be Saint Paul also, the self-appointed apostle of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, they are not superior to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. If Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 5, verse number 17 to 20, that think not that I have come to destroy the law of the prophets. I have come not to destroy but to fulfill. Until the heaven and the earth pass away, not one jot or tradition shall pass away from the law until all be fulfilled. And whosoever shall break one of the least commandments, least jot or tradition, whosoever shall break one of the least commandments and teach men to do so shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. And whosoever shall keep the commandments and teach the same shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, in no way shall you enter the kingdom of heaven. So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, I have come not to destroy the law of the prophets. I have come to fulfill. Not one jot or tittle shall pass away until the complete law is fulfilled. If any of you break one law, even a minutest, shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. And this is present in the Red Letter Bible. If you know what is the Red Letter Bible, are you aware of Red Letter Bible? MashaAllah, you know, Alhamdulillah, very good. May God bless you. Red Letter Bible is a Bible, those people who don't know, it is a red letter means those words which Jesus Christ peace be upon himself has said. Because everything of the Bible is not the word of Jesus Christ peace be upon him. In Quran, everything is the word of Allah, of God. 100%, not one jot or tittle, is not the word of Almighty God. Now, in the Bible, those which are the word of God, if you put in a newspaper, it will be less than one page. Just two long columns of it. Small percentage. It's present in the New Testament. Old Testament is nil. In the New Testament also, mainly in the Gospels. And here are the little bit in Acts. Very few. So if you analyze, it is a very small percentage of the complete Bible. And this portion is that word of Jesus Christ peace be upon him. No black letter can overrule a red letter. Because red letter is the word of Jesus Christ. Black letter is maybe somebody else. Maybe apostle, maybe historian, maybe X, Y, Z, maybe narration. No black letter can overrule a red letter. Why? Red letter is Jesus Christ peace be upon him. Unless you consider Paul, Peter, Thomas, higher than Jesus Christ, no. So in Islam also, we have Almighty God. We have a Prophet Muhammad We have our Sahaba as a companions. How you have apostles? We have companions. You have the followers of Jesus Christ. We have companions of Prophet Muhammad But no companion. If you show me the companion has speaking against Prophet Muhammad, throw away that word. Prophet Muhammad number one in the human beings. After Allah, Prophet Muhammad number one. Then comes the Sahaba. So there is a gradation. No word of the Sahaba can overrule the word of the Prophet. Never. In every religion, there is a hierarchy. The word of God cannot be overruled by the word of the messenger. The word of the companions of the messengers can never overrule the word of the prophet.
So what you are quoting me is lower grade. Right or wrong, we'll discuss later on. <laughs> what you are saying is right or wrong is different. But even if I agree it is right, what you are saying, it is a black letter. Right? So no black letter can overrule red letter if you know, if you are a scholar of Bible, you'll know. If you're not a scholar of Bible, and if somebody has told you, just a couple of clarifications. I, I'm not trying to debate you. You're most welcome, no problem. Uh, I, I'm sure I am because you're very knowledgeable. But I'm not trying to debate you. I'm just trying to learn as well as we are all trying to learn about it. So if I can learn something from you or you can learn something from me, wonderful. Uh, I just want to point out I personally do not eat pork because out of respect. Uh, but I think also there is a reason in the red letter of the Bible why Christians feel it is okay to do so. Not simply because of the black letter, but uh, Isa alayhi salam has also said that there is nothing that comes into a person through their mouth that can defile them. But it is the sinful tendencies that come out of our own heart, the evil that is in our heart that defiles a person. And it's because of that saying of uh, Hazrat Isa that uh, the Christian teaching is that he has declared foods clean, that it's not a food that you consume that, that defiles a person. So uh, whether you agree with that or not, that is at least something in the red letter that explains why Christians do feel that in the time of Moses, Allah had prohibited pork but then this was something that Hazrat Isa had made halal for his followers. I'll reply to that. I do agree with you, brother. You're not coming to debate me, neither do I want to debate you. We are learning. If you tell me something which what I've said is wrong or with my understanding, I'm willing to change. See a person, when he hears the truth, you'd accept it. If he hears the truth, if by mistake I say 2 plus 2 is 5, you say, brother, 2 plus 2 is not 5, it is 4. And you prove it to me, thank you, brother. I say, Jazakallah, may Allah reward you. We have to accept it. But if I say 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 and someone says, no, it is 5, then I say that the 2 plus 2 is 4, it's not 5, it's a mistake, and I'll correct him. So whoever's right, we have to agree. Now coming to your question, a very good argument, that in the red letter, JSKSP said, the whatever comes in your mouth, that doesn't defile you. It is what's in your heart. I agree with you for sake of argument. Then it's a contradiction between what I quoted to you. Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 5, verse number 17 to 20. Think not that I have come to destroy the law of the prophets. So that is a mistake. That means Jesus Christ, peace be told a lie. No, Allah. May Allah forbid. We don't agree with that. He cannot tell a lie. Even if you break one law or jot or a tittle, the law is, you shall not have pope. So whenever there are two statements given, we have to try and follow both together. That means the other thing which you eat, no problem, but don't have pork. Why? Because Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 5, verse number 17 to 20 says, you cannot break a single law or jot or tittle. Similarly in the Quran, there are various things in the Quran where it says that these foods are haram. But that doesn't mean only those four foods are haram. There's one more food made haram somewhere. Else. Like one place which I quoted, dead meat, blood, and flesh of swine. Somewhere else it's mentioned, alcohol is haram. That does not mean you cannot read one verse of the Quran and say that is full Islam. Fine? So any way where it's mentioned haram is haram. And then it says everything else is halal. Here when we come to know that one verse of the Bible in red letter says that I have come to keep the commandments, not break a single of them. If any of you break one jot, one tittle, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. So all the other verses cannot contradict this. Otherwise, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is telling a lie in one place, knows billah, which you don't agree. So we cannot belittle Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, to upgrade Paul or Peter. No. We cannot. That is a law. So when we realize, we say, just because Paul or Peter said something or Thomas said something, you want to go against Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said no. What we say about Paul and Peter and Thomas said is wrong. We can try and get a reconciliation if we can. If, if, if this wasn't there, Gospel of Matthew chapter 5 verse number 17 to 20, if it wasn't there, don't break law or title, maybe, maybe, not for sure, I can give you other arguments against that, time is limited. I put my ace in the front. Maybe if this verse wasn't, yes brother, very good, I agree with you. 
But because this verse is there, Gospel of Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 to 20, if you break one law, one jot or tittle, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. Then you cannot. Under any circumstances, whether Paul says that, Thomas says that, or Peter says that, or anyone says that. You understand? This is how you understand logically. So what you are doing just to upgrade Paul, you means I'm talking about some of the Christian. When I say you means Christian. To upgrade one of the apostles, you are belittling that Jesus Christ, God forbid, told a lie, which I cannot agree. So this is how you study, how you do comparative study. So based on the comparative study, what we say, that is Christian is a person who follows the teachings of Jesus Christ to be upon him, then we Muslims are more Christian than the Christian themselves. If you don't have coke, I congratulate you. Maybe after you go out of this auditorium, if you're having alcohol, you stop having alcohol. If you're worshipping Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, maybe after you leave this auditorium, you will stop worshipping Jesus Christ, peace be upon him as God. So we pray to Almighty God to give you and me guidance. I'm very happy that before you came in this auditorium, you were not having coke. Maybe after hearing my talk, you may stop having alcohol if you're having. If you're worshipping Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, after you leave this auditorium, you will worship him. La